welcome to Can't Cook, Won't Cook. So, why don't you sit back, settle down and relax? Cause it's time for your early morning cookery attack. The contestants are in the wings. So let's bring them on and let things begin right here on Can't Cook, Won't Cook! I was struggling there with a cock of work. Oh, well, no, I was struggling there a bit. Good morning to Margaret Elcock from Baycock. Bake Up, I should say. Bake up, Wonderful. Yes. Thanks for coming along, Margaret. And Steve Grundy from Blackburn. Hi, Angela. And welcome, Steve. Now, Margaret's a bit special, isn't she? She works down at the fire station. We've got yeah. some firemen in today, have we? Yeah. Yes, well supported as the cook. You're the cook at the fire station, but they've brought you on Can't Cook, Won't Cook. Steve, tell us why. Well, we thought she might pick up a few tips and give the lads a break, you know, give them a decent meal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what type of things do you normally cook there, Margaret? I mean, is it all sort of convenience packet stuff and what have you? Well, they buy their own food and it's all laid out for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all uh, laid out for me in the mornings uh, and I just cook it for Yeah, me. you're just there to lay it on the plates, <laughs> are you? Now, Margaret, you've been forced to come along, she said, because literally for the sake, they're, they're dying for you to cook something really <laughs> juicy, something succulent and something fresh. Do you think you can achieve that? Yes. Yeah, you're really confident about it? And then what I'll feed it to them every day. Yeah, every day for the next few years, I believe. Now, you left a pudding in the oven and it got burnt to a cinder because you were out sunbathing. Is that right, Margaret? Now, so it just often happened. Do you just sort of think, think, oh, I'll just go outside and have a bit of a... No, but just the once. It's just the once. <laughs> but once is enough, isn't it? Especially when the puddings. And if you... But quite, I mean, talking of puddings, what happened with the rice pudding? Tell us all about that then, Margaret. It just kept growing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it in three dishes, yeah. each one bigger than the other. And it just kept boiling <laughs> kept over boiling. it. And you ate rice pudding for three yeah. weeks, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry. I'm sure you're going to improve your skills because I'm here with you. Do you feel confident? Yes. Yeah, and you're feeling confident about tasting it, are you? Mm, we'll see, yeah. You've got no choice. You taste <laughs> it every day, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, we look forward to it. OK, let's meet the second couple who want to play Can't Cook, Won't Cook! <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, good morning to Martin and Michelle Underhay from Brixham in De yes. Devon. Oh, it's lovely down there, isn't yes. it, eh? Beautiful area. Yeah, really? Do, and do you live in a kind of little sort of village or something like yeah. that? Or? Yeah, it's, it's just outside of Brixham, really, you know, and uh, nice and quiet. Yeah. Nice and quiet area. Well, sometimes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> now, you've been married for six and a half years. We Any have, little yes. ones yet? Oh, three. Not three. <laughs> three little ones, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's fresh air and after you good, didn't it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you down there, that's wonderful. But... Now, why have you brought hubby along? I mean, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing that a man can't cook today, but mm. you expect a bit more from him. Why is that? Well, he's just, he's terrible. Mm -hmm. We used to take it in turns. Whoever got home from work first, cooked the meal. Mm -hmm. He got home on one occasion, started off cooking the meal. I came home, smelt reasonably okay, sat down. I said to him, it's an overwhelming taste of vinegar, Mark. It was yeah. liver and onions. Yes. It was supposed to be liver and onions. It was. It was liver and onions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it domestic. It was, oh. It was liver and onions. Easy mistake to make at the end of the day. I didn't know, you know. Yeah. I mean, what happened basically was I put the meat in, the gravy, great. Like, you know, I was looking for the onions. I couldn't find any onions anywhere. Open the cupboard. Onions, great. So I got them, took them out of the jar. <laughs> cutting them up. Pickled onions, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking pickled onions. And I, I chucked them in and it was... Uh, I and tasted it. It was yeah. lovely. Yeah, I finished my tea. He didn't stop there. He put the vinegar in as well. The, whole, the right. whole jar. <laughs> the whole jar. Well, there wasn't enough gravy. So Hold on. It don't one. stop there. We don't want any domestics. Oh, what right. about? Sorry. I mean, he's thinking he's a great cook here. What about you putting the kettle on top of the gas fire then, eh? No. Well, and melting that all over your bangers and everything. Yeah, What's well, going on here? Well, I, I was doing this fry up, and I, it was it was all smoking. It was burning. I thought, well, I've got to rush, and I've got to do this, got to do that. But put the bangers on. So what's happened is the kettle's in the way, and I thought. Oh, put the kettle on, put it on top of the grill. Mm. And like, we've got one of them grills at the top, like, you know. And um, <laughs> the sausages were on, went back doing something else, come back, yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. this, well, there's this grey stuff all over the bangers. <laughs> it's the kettle, it's melted all through the vents and everything, all oh. over the bangers. <laughs> oh, no. And did you have to eat it? I didn't. The kids did. Yeah! <laughs> they ain't got a choice. Oh, God, you see, that's what happens, isn't you? You can, you can improve on that. Do you feel confident about improving today, though, Mark? Yeah, I, I really do feel confident. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I've, I've tried Sunday again. I tried to do something, you know, and it went wrong. But hopefully today is mm. the day it's all going to change. Oh, dear. Help me. I think help you're in kids. for a bit of a special experience. Do you think you can do it, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! Yeah, yeah well, let's play Kong Kong Wonka! Come on and join me. Come a little bit closer. Move 
closer Move those hats real closer Until I reveal what's underneath my clutch today Oh, they're all excited Look at that, beautiful. Look, at, isn't that delightful? That looks This is spring wonderful. vegetable pasta. I'm going to show you how to cook all your vegetables really crispy and crunchy. And you've got that lovely charcoal coldy sort of taste to them. You've got lovely flecks of palms and cheese in there. Cooking your pasta al dente, which is very, very important. You don't need to boil it forever and ever. How to do some nice sort of crispy tomatoes that we're going to bake into the oven. And of course, some lovely ciabatta bread there, toasted. We'll just make it sort of mm, mm. melt in your mouth and a little bit of crunch. You mm. up for that? Yeah. Have a little bit of a smell of that. Say, so, ooh, Ainsley, ooh. Ooh, Ainsley, ooh. Ooh, my God. <laughs> ooh, Ainsley, ooh. Ooh, ooh, Ainsley, ooh. Let's rattle those pots and pans! <laughs> OK, Martin and Margaret, of course we're talking about cooking, so you've got two pots on it. Let's get some heat underneath. Full heat under both of them. We want the water to come up to the boil for our pasta. You want a nice rolling boil there. Now, you've got some tomatoes here. We'll use three tomatoes. Now, the really good thing about sort of using up tomatoes like this, and what I mean by using up, is the fact is that they're, they're ripe tomatoes. You know when you put your tomatoes down, they're starting to get just a little bit soft. Well, it's ideal for this type of recipe. Really, you just want to cut them up there. So cut them into quarters for me. Notice I've got a little bit of a crane there. If you want to turn them flat, you can, so they don't wobble about too much. All the way down, cut right through them, and then cut them into quarters for me. All right, that's what we're looking for. And do that to all the tomatoes. All right, now transfer them onto your tray for me. Lay them up side by side. Side by side. Day oh, by that. day. <laughs> day by day. Side by side. Side by side. Day by day. I like my tomatoes. Side by side. Nice and right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Go on, get in there, Margaret. Day by day. Day by day. <laughs> ah, lovely. Very, very good indeed. All right, now, we you pick up your rock salt for me? Yeah, I unfortunately, I've had to take out a little bit of rock salt out of Susie's salt here. So we're just using ordinary rock salt there. <coughs> get your fingers in there. Get a good finger full. That's it. Put that down. Flick your hand out to the side, OK? And start wobbling and then, then shaking all over the top of your tomatoes. Fingers back in the salt again. I really want you to give those a good salting there. Lots of rock salt all over the top there, that's it. Still shaking, come on, Margaret, let me see your flow, girl. That's it, give that a bit. That's it, all right, that's beautiful. All right, pick up, you've got some nice virgin olive oil, the, the square one there, that one over there, that's it, virgin olive oil. Right, take that off. That's it. Now, I'd just like to put my finger just on the top there. So if you hold that, just the finger on the top there and have a little bit of a drizzle. That's it. Look at that. Just drizzle that over the top there. Really give that a good drizzle. That's beautiful. Lovely. Oh, that's great. All right, pick up your tomatoes and take them over to your ovens. We're talking again about Gas Mark 7. Quite a nice high heat here. OK, open up your oven. Put them on the top shelf for me, please. That's it. And in they go. That's lovely. Oh, that's it. Around. That's it. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's not important. That's all right. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Now, any idea what these are, Margaret? I forgot. <laughs> you're used asparagus. to seeing... Asparagus. Asparagus, yes. Ah. You're used to seeing them in the packet, aren't you? That's why. <laughs> that's, that's no good. There we are. We've got some asparagus there. I'm not going to do anything with them. You can see that. Quite young. Look at them. Very, very thin little sprigs there of asparagus. Just pop that into your glass bowl there for me. Lovely. And then, I think that water's about ready now. Just take that nice boiling water, sprinkle your pasta into your saucepan for me. Now look, bit of style there, Margaret. Where's that hand up there, my darling? A little bit of style, that's it. That's it, a little bit of style there. Go on in, in you go. Oh, yeah, he's gyrating, isn't he, eh? Hey? Give it the old Brixham shuffle, boy. Go on, that's it. All of that goes inside. All right, then. That's it, give that a little bit of a stir that's coming up there, just separate that. I'm going to put a bit of water, just, sorry, a bit of salt there, just season them up and then go, Ooh, Susie Salty. Ooh, Susie Salty. <laughs> Ooh, Susie Salty. Ah, oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely, 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 lovely. They're playing the game, aren't they? They're playing the game. Yes, we like that. <laughs> OK, now on to, we've got, we've got some lovely, that lovely pepper there, isn't it? That lovely sort of pimento. You call that, do you like that? Do you know, when you go out, 